Las Vegas and the World Series of Poker have been around a long time. The only person I know who's been around as long as that is Norman Chad. We came down the Fremont Street to catch up with the legend. I know that, you know, somebody of your stature gets invited to, you know, some pretty interesting home games. Uh, any particular one that you might want to talk about? Well, I don't get invited to that many particular home games, but I was thrilled and honored to be invited to the Sam Simon monthly home game, oh. the late, great Sam Simon. I'm so jealous. Uh, one of the creators of The Simpsons, uh, one of the most charitable men of all time, and a, a, a very good poker player, and he came, he cashed in the main event, I believe, one year, and he, he cashed at the World Series three times. So I got invited to his home game, and at that home game there was Sam Simon, there was Drew Carey, there was Norm Macdonald, there was Jen Tilly, there was me, and there was a couple of other people I didn't know who had a lot of money. And uh, that was the only time I went to the Sam Simon home game. You, you must have killed it. You'd think that I'd kill it uh, if that was the only time I went, because they always invite you back when you lose. I lost the most money I'd ever lost at a home game that night. I lost uh, <laughs> $3,500, maybe $4,500. Wow. At a, it was a mix of, uh, it was No Limit Hold'em and PLO, like you know, 10 hands of each. And I got scammed early in the game by Norm McDonald. Scammed. So scammed, in fact, Tuck, that if this was not my first time there, if I knew these people better, if I didn't feel embarrassed about what happened, I would have walked out the door right there because what he did was so unacceptable, beyond human belief. Okay, well, what, what, did, Norm, what did Norm McDonald do to you? He essentially, he, he scammed me out of a pot. So after they play each round of each game, they play one hand of this ridiculous home game where you can throw away a card at the end. It's a high-low split game, but where you're making a decision where you want to get rid of a card and get a new card. So it's, it's, they play one hand of that each time. And uh, it's a high-low game. So Norm pretended, and Sam was all in on this particular hand, like on, on it's, it's a five-card game, I believe, five-card stud. He was all in up by Third Street, and it was just me and, and, and Norm. And Norm then, after he got rid of a card and got a new card, he insisted he'd made a mistake, that he didn't mean to break up the pair, and that he didn't know what he was thinking, and no, he had a pair, and so I had the low one, and why is he breaking up the pair? And so I started saying, listen, Norm, I'll be, I was friendly. So Norm, we can just, you know, I understand you made a mistake. I'll just go the different way than you go. You go low, I'll go high. He goes, no, 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 no. We went through this forever. And no one could understand why he was just saying, no, we're not gonna do this. And I'm trying to give him a break because he made this mistake. So I then, I got rid of a card so that I wouldn't have a pair and, or so I would make a low or something. And I got a new card and that paired me up. And then he said, oh, okay, oh, whatever. Whatever he did is that he then induced me to go the wrong way. I mean, we just had to declare high or low with a chip in our hand, okay? He went through this incredible story. It was like a five-minute story that when we, and this is about an $800 pot that we would have split. But he, because he went through this whole business in which he was just acting, he induced me to go. I had no idea he was acting. I thought he made an honest mistake and I was trying to give him a break. He made me go against my better hand and he took the whole pot and I was frozen. I lost 800, you know, the $800 pot that he just scammed me out of. Jen Tilly said to him, Norm, I cannot believe you just did that. And Norm, who is a true degenerate, just answered, it's poker. And I was so upset, I did not speak for like 30 or 45 minutes. And wow. I don't know if I went on tilt, but I lost 35 or 45 minutes. I have to imagine that that contributed to your biggest losing session ever. It could not help. I mean, I took some <laughs> tough beats in the games, but I just remembered I could not wait to leave there. My, you know, I was boiling inside. Wow. So uh, let's, let's turn our attention to poker in general, because, you know, obviously, Poker has gone through, you know, a crazy roller coaster ride in the sense of, you know, you were there for the boom, you know, 2003 up through 2006, even throughout, and obviously, you know, uh, the legal issues that poker has faced over, you know, 2006 and then again in 2011 have certainly been bumps in the road. But from a worldwide point of view, it seems like poker is very healthy. It is. Where do you see it, and, and where do you see the obstacles in the future? Well, poker at a different level before the TV boom, it was pretty healthy. It was healthy in terms of people were playing it at home. It wasn't really big in casinos. Some casinos had closed their poker rooms. But poker is an American game that people love to play. So with the, the confluence of the poker on TV, the whole card cams, the creation of the World Poker Tour, and online poker for the first time, we had our boom with it being on TV. Okay? So you think of all the blows to the head poker in America has taken the last 10 years because of the legal problems, because the, the, the sites were shut down, and online became essentially illegal throughout most of America. 
It's amazing how healthy poker still is right now in America. And you just mentioned the other key is that around the world, where it didn't even exist a generation ago, it's becoming very, very big. Whether it's Russia, whether it's India, whether it's Australia. So poker's rising across the world and will actually rise again in America if and when and it's doing well enough in America, if and when online poker is, is legalized across all 50 states. You still love the game? Yeah, I like the game recreationally. I don't like the game seriously. So I don't like where the game has gone with the, the Robotrons and the, the programming and sitting down with your hoodie and your headset and your shades and you just sit there and you play without any social aspect. I play poker for the social aspect. So many of us who like to play even once or twice a week or less play it for the social aspect. We like to win, but we like to be social. So we don't like to go to a table where no one's speaking or everyone's underneath hoodies or everyone's making you feel bad because you don't play uh, optimal. You know, they can play GTO all they want. You know, I'll play, I'll play game theory optional, which means I ain't playing game theory. So <laughs> I do like to play it recreationally. I don't like it when it's taken at another level and it, it really, it discourages the, the recreational players from playing. This goes without saying, but you are one of the most well-respected minds in the poker world. You know, if I blushed, I would blush right now, but I don't blush. I am, I am blush free. A lot of poker players have put their hard-earned money in cryptocurrency. What are your views on crypto? God bless them, but as much as I like table talk, you know, and people talking about table, I cannot tell you, even at my recreational game, what percentage of the players are talking about crypto. I would ban talking politics, Kardashians, crypto, just for starters. I don't, I don't want to hear another word about crypto. It's that simple. I'm tired of it. Norman Chad, I have taken you back to this beautiful, beautiful place. I, you know what? It just It's good to see how the 1% lives. I, it's a luxurious, in the shadow of the closed Outback Steakhouse sign. This is the life of luxury I lead in a one bedroom, garden apartment with parking, access to a freeway ramp. If you can you, climb there, <laughs> you can't get your car there, but I could climb there if I had sticky gloves. This is my life for those who think that I'm, uh, you know, Panorama Towers with Justin Bonomo polyamorying. That's not a bad thing. <laughs> Norman, thank, thank you, you very much. All right. I will wholeheartedly say that one of the highlights of my career has been the opportunity to meet some of the greats in the game, whether it be Doyle Brunson or somebody newer like Nick Shulman. But Norman, you are definitely on that list. Thank you from the bottom of my heart.